Hey, Cornerstone, maybe it's too soon, but it has to be said, Sunday's Super Bowl was a disappointment. There we all were watching our TVs with eager anticipation, expecting the Chiefs to do it again, to bring home a championship to Kansas City. We were expecting a repeat and it just didn't happen. Minute after minute, quarter after quarter, it didn't happen. I don't know about you, but I felt like I just wanted to step in. We all wanted to step in. We wanted to cheer them on and say, you guys can do this. We wanted to come and fight for them and make it happen, but we couldn't. And they weren't able to take home the championship. Maybe next year they can do it. But as I was watching the game, it reminded me of a passage that I just recently read in my daily Bible reading. It comes from the book of Exodus. And let me read the passage. It's from Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You will need only to be still. I love this passage. In fact, as I read it, it stopped me in my tracks because I realized this is what is true of our God. In the game of life, when we are going and doing the things that are in front of us and when we feel like we are failing, he is able to step in. He is the one that doesn't just cheer us on. No, he's actually done the work for us. There's three exhortations in this passage that I want us to pay attention to. And I think what we have to understand is here the Israelites are. They were freed from Egypt and they finally get free and there they are up against the Red Sea. And they see the sea and then they look and they see the Egyptians coming in. They're trapped and they figured this is it. We're toast. Game over. But that's exactly where God operates. And the three exhortations here for us are simply this. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and be still. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and be still. All of this points us to the gospel because God told, told them, don't be afraid. I've got this. I've got you. And when we look to the person of Jesus, what we see is that there Jesus entered the sea of death and he got to the other side in his resurrection so that he takes us through death and judgment itself so that no matter what's going on in our lives right here, right now, we know that we will safely arrive to our destination where God is waiting for us. And that allows us to not be afraid. Whatever we're going through right here, right now, he's got us. He's watching over us because Jesus walked through the sea of death in order to deliver us. And then this second exhortation is stand firm. They were faced with an army and they wanted to go back. I don't know if you ever experienced that where you just figure, you know what, it's easier. It's easier just to live my old life. It's easier to embrace my old struggles, my old temptations, the things in my life that sometimes just soothe me and make me feel better. And that's what the Israelites wanted to do. They wanted to go back. They wanted to head back to slavery. But God is saying, no, stand firm. I've got something for you. And again, the gospel helps us here because of what Jesus has done. We can stand firm knowing that he fights for our purity, for our righteousness. And he gives us the righteousness of Jesus to empower us and strengthen us to move through those struggles and those temptations and to go through those with his power, the power of his spirit. Not only that, but then he says, be still. In other words, we need to take responsibility for only the things we can take responsibility for. So as a parent, all I can do is strive to be a good parent, but I can't take responsibility for my children's choices. I can help them, I can guide them, I can lead them, but at the end of the day, I need to be still. They take those choices. Or when you share the good news of Jesus, we need to step out and tell others about Jesus. But at the end of the day, it's not up to me to save them. That's up to God. And so I can be still. I can wait on him and pray that he will work, knowing and trusting that he always is at work, even when we can't see it. And so as we go into this week, as we feel like maybe sometimes life is beaten up on us and, and we sometimes it feels like we're losing, let us take hope in those three phrases. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and be still because God is the one who fights for you. He fights for me. And we see that most clearly in the person and work of Jesus. And that changes everything for us. Let us move into this week with that kind of confidence. Amen.